Hey guys, in this review, we're covering the brand new Solo Pie Prime pizza oven from Solo Stove. Solo Stove claims it can reach temperatures of 950 degrees Fahrenheit and cook a pizza in as little as 90 seconds. We'll show you how to get this set up, cook some pizzas, destroy a cast iron pan, and put all those claims to the test in our latest review of the Solo Stove Pie Prime pizza oven. Just a quick disclaimer, Solo Stove sent me this unit and some accessories to test out, but as always, this will be an honest review. First, let's get this set up. The unit comes pretty much assembled. The only thing you need to do is hook up the propane and install the corduroyed stone. The stone comes in two sections and you'll find it below the pizza oven when you take it out of the box. Installation wasn't hard, just tuck the one half to the side, then install the other side. You want to push these two together for a tight fit. The stone is 13 millimeters thick. The propane is super simple, just attach the propane hose to the propane tank. Solo Stove recommends checking the connections and regulator for any dirt and debris and for any leaks by turning the propane on and spraying the fitting with a 50-50 soap and water mixture. If there were any leaks, we'd see bubbles here. The propane hose comes directly off the back so you can see here side mounting the propane tank is not ideal and you'll want to take that into consideration for your tank placement. Not a huge deal, I can work from the side on my cart. My unit measured a skosh over 20.5 inches in diameter at the feet. The feet are hard plastic and during use there was no slippage but a little non-skid rubber padding would be a nice touch. Alright, let's fire it up. Make sure the knob is in the off position before turning on your propane. Once the propane is on, push the knob in and turn counterclockwise until you hear a click. Then check to see if it's lit. My very first time starting the Prime, it didn't light, and if that happens, Solo recommends waiting five minutes before retrying. That allows the built up gas to dissipate. I didn't wait five minutes and it started right up on the second try, and ever since it's fired right up on the first try. If for some reason the igniter fails to work, you can light it with the supplied match holder. Just make sure to follow all of the instructions in the manual on lighting this unit. Solo recommends running the unit full tilt for 30 minutes prior to first use to burn off any residual coatings for manufacturing. This is also a good time to test the preheat times and overall stone temps. We're starting with a stone temp of around 127 degrees because I had it lit for a few seconds when I was test starting it. So as you can see, even after one and a half hours, I was not able to get the oven to 950 degrees. In the middle of the stone, the temp stayed consistently above 800 degrees, which is perfect. There's lots of variables here, and I'm sure that 950 degree claim can happen in the absolute perfect conditions. But 800 degrees is plenty hot enough. Okay, let's make some pizzas. For the dough, I'm using a recipe that can handle the high heat, and it's more of a cross between New York and Neapolitan. I'm using King Arthur bread flour, 60% water, 3% salt, and a smidgen of yeast. It's the same recipe as in my how to make the perfect pizza in your crappy home oven video, except for this oven, I won't be using sugar because it will burn. I'm using 300 gram dough balls for a slightly thicker 12 inch pie. This is Solo's new pie prep board, and it's cool because it has these recessed containers that can hang off the counter for more space. And it's also got this nice little pizza measurer here. So I'm starting to bake at a little below 700 degrees, and the first pizza cooked great. It took two minutes and nine seconds. I cranked up the oven and my second pizza took 90 seconds. I made eight pizzas total and with the exception to the first pizza, all of them took about 90 seconds. That's super impressive to me. Normally there's a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to each oven, but I found that if I let this oven go full tilt, the pizzas cook perfectly. I didn't have to turn the flame up or down. I just let it rip and they came out perfect from top to bottom. Keep in mind, some of this has to do with the dough you're using, and I'd encourage you to make your own dough that can handle the high heat. These pizzas were great, and I'm actually super impressed. It looks beautiful! 
Solo Stove has hit the pizza game pretty hard and released a bunch of cool accessories to go with their ovens. This rocker blade pizza cutter works well, just not on this beveled edge pan. I didn't notice much of a difference between the docked and undocked pies, but it seems to do its job. This turning peel is the best peel I've ever used in combination with Prime's large panoramic opening, and it was large enough to use for retrieval. This apron is super nice and durable, it reminds me of the material in Carhartt overalls, and it's very adjustable. If you don't want to look like this after a pizza cooking session, then get one. I wasn't totally crazy about the infrared thermometer, I think the backlighting can be brightened up a bit. It did its job, I just think there's room for improvement. You can also get this cast iron set, it's super nice, it comes with a 12 inch skillet, a 12 inch reversible grill and griddle, and a base to set them on. You'll need to season these, I applied a thin coat of canola oil and baked them for one hour at 475 degrees. I repeated that process four times. And that seasoning will protect them and create a nice non-stick surface. Keep in mind the seasoning will burn off at heat beyond 600 degrees, so keep an eye on the temperature. I'll show you exactly what that looks like in a couple minutes. I've never used my pizza ovens to cook anything but pizza, so I'm excited to try this. I love salmon cooked in cast iron, so this is a great option if you don't want the oil splatter in your house. I'm using the flat side of the griddle to get a nice sear. These cooked nice and I thought they were done but they needed a little more time. The griddle really gave the skin a nice crispy char and overall cooked these salmon fillets beautifully. But this is where I screwed up. I put the pan back in to get hot it's with all here. the grease and when I went back to get another fillet, the pan was on fire. It went way over 600 degrees and I ruined all that work I did on the seasoning. So I'll have to redo this seasoning unfortunately. But we can test the skillet now. One thing to note is the skillet is considerably lighter than the griddle and much easier to handle. I also felt like the outside of the fish cooked faster in the skillet and once again I needed to put it back in for more time. I did use a different seasoning on this one so it may have charred up a little quicker, but overall both pans did a great job and the salmon turned out fantastic. Oh and speaking of accessories, this silicone mat is probably the most useful to this oven and come to think of it, I can't think of another pizza oven that you can set something on top of. It's such a great underrated feature to have this warming rack right on top of your oven. The silicone mat does get hot but you've got a good 3-4 to four seconds before it hurts to the touch. It also comes with a cover which is not exactly common with pizza ovens. Clean up some breeze in this oven, just crank the heat and let it rip. Think of it as a self-cleaning oven and the time it takes depends on how dirty it is. Once it cools, just wipe it out with a dry towel. This stainless steel will discolor a bit over time, but that's normal. I'm cleaning the grease from the salmon with a little barkeeper's friend and a paper towel. Just make sure not to get any cleaning product on the stone as it is porous and will soak it up. As far as portability, it's as portable as a pizza oven can be, I suppose. It's just a touch over 30 pounds and the circular shape makes it very easy to carry and maneuver. So do I recommend this oven? Absolutely. For $350, this oven is a steal in my opinion. This was the least amount of fussing I've ever done with my first use of a pizza oven. I'm totally impressed by the design, the functionality, and just how good it cooks a pizza. I do not hesitate to recommend this oven at this price point. That's it for this review. We hope you enjoyed it. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.